Hi, I'm Jeff Klein, editor of Radiographics, and today I'm pleased to have with us Dr. Yiming Gao from the Department of Radiology at NYU Langone Medical Center, who is the first author of one of our featured papers in the current January 2019 issue of Radiographics. And her paper is entitled Physiologic or Pathologic, an Analysis of Nipple Enhancement Anatomy on Breast MRI with Radiologic Pathologic Correlation. Dr. Gao, welcome to our podcast. Thank you. So, Yiming, your paper begins by pointing out the importance of evaluating the, the nipple areolar complex on breast MRI. Can you summarize for our listeners the issues surrounding the assessment of the nipple region as it relates to cancer staging and in avoiding false positive findings on contrast-enhanced breast MRI? Sure. Um, contrast enhanced breast MRI is currently used primarily in two settings, uh, both for diagnostic purposes and for screening purposes. And for diagnostics, um, breast MRI is most commonly used for cancer staging uh, because tumor involvement of the nipple areola complex upstages disease and is relevant to treatment management. Um, so assessment of nipple areola region on MRI is very important particularly given this area is often poorly uh, assessed on other modalities that we have, such as mammography or ultrasound. And in most recent um, surgical um, literature, there has been a push to sort of lower the threshold for safe performance of uh, nipple sparing mastectomies. For example, the conventionally established uh, safe tumor to nipple distance has been two centimeters or greater. And there has been evidence in the surgical literature to suggest that it's safe now to perform uh, nipple sparing surgeries for uh, tumors as close to nipple as one centimeter. So for that reason, uh, there has been an increasing number of uh, nipple sparing surgeries being performed in cancer patients. And so for this reason, um, assessment of this region on staging breast MRI has become increasingly critical. On the other hand, um, breast MR has been, in the screening setting, it has traditionally been used only for screening the high-risk population. But in the more recent radiology literature, there has been suggestion that um, screening with MR may be beneficial also for intermediate risk uh, women, um, potentially even for average risk women. And of course, given the recent development of abbreviated MR and ultra-fast MRI, uh, population-based MR screening has become uh, potentially feasible, and this could be a reality in the future. And in this setting of wider uh, screening with breast MRI, we are likely to encounter much more subtle uh, abnormalities and a wider range of normal appearance of the nipple areolar region on breast MR. And in order to avoid false positives, uh, I think this will require a more nuanced knowledge base on the radiologist's part. And for all these reasons, I think better assessment of the nipple areolar region uh, on MR has become quite important. Great, thank you. So now your paper reviews the normal MRI nipple areolar findings in 265 normal patients that underwent screening breast MR uh, at your institution. Uh, following a review of the MRI appearance of the nipple areolar complex for the staging of cancer and for the adjunctive screening of women at high risk for breast cancer, as you mentioned, uh, you proceed to state that there is little information on the MR appearances of normal nipple enhancement. Based on the retrospective review of your patients, your paper describes a series of normal findings based on the use of a descriptive terminology that was extracted from the existing literature. Can we review the terms to be used to describe the various nipple enhancement patterns that are illustrated in figures six through eight? Yes. Um, so just a word about uh, this, uh, the terminology. Our descriptive terminology is indeed based on a prior study uh, from back in 1997 and refined by our own observations uh, based on exams performed on three Tesla MRI uh, with input from our pathologist colleagues. So 
in figure six, uh, what's being depicted here is what's called superficial linear enhancement. This refers to uh, a thin rim of smooth superficial enhancement of the nipple areola complex at the level of the skin uh, with intensity of enhancement greater than the adjacent skin. And as you can see here uh, in the two separate examples, uh, this enhancement may be limited to the nipple proper or may extend into the areola region uh, depending on the subjects. It's uh, usually symmetric and the normal thickness of this superficial linear enhancement should not, in general, exceed two millimeters. And if we move on to figure seven, uh, we're indicating here the non-enhancing zone. And as the name indicates, it's a zone of non-enhancement located uh, immediately subjacent to the superficial linear enhancement. And this corresponds to the dermis um, on pathology correlation. And uh, then further on to figure eight, um, as you can see, we are now depicting internal nipple enhancement, which is uh, really enhancement um, subjacent to the superficial linear enhancement and non-enhancing zone now within the substance of the nipple. Um, and uh, it may be linear or patchy in appearance or distribution based on our study. Great. The next section compares normal breast specimens with findings on contrast enhanced MRI. You then describe abnormal nipple enhancement patterns, beginning with the loss of the normal superficial linear enhancement pattern, as can be seen in Paget disease of the nipple. Figure 12 shows, shows such a case. Can you take us through this case? Sure. Um, so this is a case of Paget disease of the nipple, uh, which is essentially adenocarcinoma involving the epidermis of the nipple. Um, this is typically associated with inflammatory erosions and excoriations. And because normal uh, epidermal enhancement of nipple on MR uh, manifests as, as the superficial linear enhancement that we just described, this layer is obliterated. And so MR, you no longer perceive the superficial linear enhancement. And similarly, because of tumor info infiltration into the dermis as well, uh, the previously described non-enhancing zone is also similarly um, no longer seen. And if you look at the nipple uh, grossly, the morphology is abnormal and retracted. And the, norm, uh, the, the enhancement is also very avid and iso-intense to the underlying uh, tumor within the breast. Uh, so in such a way, the normal structural anatomy is disrupted. Thank you. So the paper next describes the disruption of normal anatomic boundaries and then discusses abnormal enhancement intensity. In particular, the concept that any nipple enhancement that exceeds background parenchymal enhancement warrants further investigation. Importantly, you point out in the paper that both malignant and benign conditions can produce this finding. Let's look at figure 15, which is a case of DCIS that nicely illustrates this finding. Mm -hmm. This is a case um, of cancer recurrence after nipple sparing mastectomy. Um, in this case, uh, you see avid abnormal enhancement within the native nipple. Uh, which does not stop at the base of the nipple, as we previously described normal internal uh, nipple enhancement to be, but it extends below it and stopping only short at the surgical junction line between the reconstructed uh, flap and the native tissue. So this is also much higher in intensity uh, than would be expected for physiologic background parenchymal enhancement, although it's somewhat difficult to reference in this woman after mastectomy. Um, Interestingly, because the recurrence arose from a large central native duct within the nipple, uh, you can see in this case actually the superficial linear enhancement and the non-enhancing zone are both preserved. Um, this was high-grade DCIS at surgery. So um, as you mentioned, one of our key findings from the study is that nipple enhancement compared to background parenchymal enhancement uh, is an important indicator of whether it may be abnormal. And certainly they're both benign and uh, malignant etiologies. And we've, we've had some benign examples also in the paper. All right, well, thank you for that. So now the final section of the paper details artifacts and pitfalls, including motion artifacts and nipple malposition, inverted nipples, skin lesions, and benign asymmetry. Can we show figure 21, which shows how skin disease can present as abnormal nipple enhancement on MRI? Mm -hmm. 
So speaking to uh, motion, I just want to say nipples are very small structures uh, that are very prone to motion uh, at MR scanning. So positioning the patient well and careful instructions are very important before scanning. Uh, in fact, in our study, a large number of cases had to be excluded because of significant artifacts involving the nipples, uh, making it in, impossible to, to interpret. In this particular case, uh, here shown in the figure, there is uh, abnormal asymmetric enhancement of the left nipple, uh, which turned out to be inflamed Montgomery gland cyst involving the areola. Um, but this is only clear after clinical correlation, which highlights uh, importance of clinical history. And so a nipple is a tricky uh, area to assess. Oftentimes, surgical consultation is uh, maybe needed because nipple abnormalities are usually not amenable to percutaneous sampling or biopsy. Um, so that's that case. Great. Well, so Dr. Gao, thanks so much for taking the time today to discuss your paper on MRI of nipple areolar complex, which can be found in the current January 2019 issue of Radiographics. Thanks so much. Thank you.